This is the FMD of a miniature air hockey table. A miniature air hockey table is essentially a wooden box with holes that has a fan underneath. If we draw a cross section of it, it'll kind of look something like this. Um, essentially, air is pushed in through the fan and eventually out the holes will then interact with the puck and the sliders. If we draw a representation of these streamlines, we can see that there's two main areas of interest. The first is the fan itself, and the second is everything else which uh, everything else is referring to how the air will flow within the box and eventually out the holes. The fan is an electrical mechanical device. It consists of impellers connected to a centerpiece, which is spun by an electrical actuator. Um, and we can see that as we increase the input voltage, the airspeed resulting from the fan actually increases. However, actuators like these are only designed to run at certain voltages. This one in particular was a 12 volt motor. So as soon as I gave it 20 volts, it actually burned out. The two basic components of it, the fan underneath and the, the board with holes in it, and um, yeah, they're comparable size. And then for the dimensions of the board, we have the top view is about 29 centimeters by 48 and uh, 15 holes by 26. And the fan in the middle is um, pretty small compared to the whole board, um, so there will be more losses of the edges over here and over here in the corners. Then we have the side view, um, right here is where the holes are. Uh, and in the middle is the distance we'll use for calculating the Reynolds number. Um, the holes uh, have a diameter of two millimeters and a distance between of 1.85 centimeters. So uh, the diameter compared to the distance between is um, a small enough ratio that we can kind of neglect the, the between them, the flow between them. And then the puck, uh, the geometry um, can cover between four and nine holes and. Um, so we're looking at the force, uh, the lift force on, on that with the, the number of holes that it's covering. We'll use conservation of momentum to calculate the force per hole on the air hockey table. First we start with Newton's second law for conservation of momentum for the force. Then we use the control volume instead of a control mass and the Reynolds transport theorem with least coordinates to move to the force equal to the rate of change of momentum in the volume plus the rate of momentum flux across the surface. Then by only looking at their x momentum since that's the only portion that we're gonna care about, we can simplify these vector terms here and here but still have this term here vectorized as it symbolizes the flux across the surface. Next, we assume the flow is steady, so we get rid of the derivative term, and we're just left with the second term across the surface. Then, using the fact that the speed of the fluid is entirely in the x-direction, we can simplify this uh, dot product here and get that the force on the puck will be rho u squared a. And the u we use is found from conservation of mass by using the speed on the other side of the fan and the total amount of fluid that would be coming out of the holes. And we got that 0.0028 newtons. Multiplying this by nine, since we're assuming that the puck covers nine holes, we get 0.026 newtons. And by the weight of the puck, since we had to assume that as well, we assume that that'll probably be about 10% of reduction of the friction. We <laughs> calculate the Reynolds number flowing through the air hockey table. Um, we know the Reynolds number equation is equal to the density of the fluid times the speed of the fluid times the specific length divided by the viscosity. Um, we know the density of air is 1.2 kilograms per meter squared meter cubed. We calculated the speed of the air to be six meters per second. Um, we're gonna model the air rock table as two flat plates where the specific length is the distance between the two plates, uh, which we measured to be 0.85 centimeters. And the viscosity of air is 1.48 times 10 to the fifth Pascal seconds. Um, so calculating the Reynolds number, we find it to be about 4,000, um, which means it's in turbulent flow. So our goal for the aerodynamic table to work is you need to have turbulent flow. This means the Reynolds number has to be over 1,300. Um, so recalculating that, we can say we can use a fluid that has a maximum viscosity of 4.7 times 10 to the negative fifth Pascal seconds, so about four times bigger than air. Or if we keep air, um, we can bring the diameter or the specific length between the plates down to 0.26 centimeters.